Greetings and salutations, Dave, or I guess technically I should call you Dead on Dave. This is Christopher Daniels. Hey, everyone, wrestling. it's the Native American Tatanka. Want to give a big shout out to Dead on Dave. Dave, this is Leon White, Big Van Vader. Dead on Dave. What's up, man? It's the coat. Hello, you this is the hardcore legend is. Mick Foley, and I know when I want to keep up with the latest in wrestling news from around the world, I check in with Dead on Dave Productions. He covers a wide variety of wrestling topics, including the career of the hardcore legend. Don't miss it. Dead on Productions. Yeah. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Dead on Dave, with a very burned nose. But hey, I'm still here because we got something to talk about, man. There's controversy in the wrestling world. We have interpromotional strife going on because, as you know... We have two storylines that are eerily similar with each other in the final deletion match and the Wyatt compound fight. Everybody's talking about it. What's better? Is it a ripoff? Uh, all these different things, right? Why is everybody getting on TNA, but they're praising WWE or all these things, right? So here I am stuck in the middle because most people know me on this channel. I am a WWE guy. I love WWE. Uh, they have their faults, and I blast them for it when need be. But I think overall the balance is better there than anywhere else in wrestling. That's just my opinion. Uh, TNA, I've been a fan of my, since its existence. I love TNA. I, I'm uh, very dissatisfied with the current product. I was not a huge fan of Final Deletion. I did criticize it here on this channel. But... Not for the reasons that most people criticized it. I don't think that it was a bad thing to do as far as getting people talking. My argument to that was just this. If you go to Taco Bell and there's a brand new taco and everybody goes and eats it and talks about it, that's one thing. But if everybody goes and eats it and talks about it and says, this tastes like shit, that's not good for your overall growth of your business. Uh, the narrative has changed on Final Deletion. A lot of the, a lot of my colleagues in the YouTube douchebag business have gone on and said a lot of other things as far as, you know, uh, the, the creativity is amazing and all this stuff, and this is what we need in wrestling. Personally, if things like this ha are the norm, even with the Wyatt Family Compound, the Lucha Underground, like overproduced television vignettes, if that becomes the norm, that will push me out of wrestling. It's just not my cup of tea. Because I like in-ring action, I like the product, I like that, that's what I enjoy. So what I thought I would do was I'd make a video and i talk about these two in a side-by-side -side comparison and kind of really just see where we get, you know, see if we can get anywhere that makes sense for most people, all right? Let's start with this. Is the Wyatt Compound a ripoff of Final Deletion? Yes, yes it is, but... Here's why I don't have a problem with that and why it doesn't matter. Wrestling is cyclical. Wrestling borrows storylines from each other all of the time. And you can make the argument that Matt Hardy himself is influenced by Bray Wyatt. I mean, and Bray, who has eloquently put it on Twitter, nobody is broken without me. And he's 100% right there. I mean, Bray Wyatt has kind of the corner on the crazy shtick market and Yet nobody really talked about it uh, when they were blasting WWE for doing essentially the same type of storyline. Nobody talked about the fact that the Wyatts have been doing this shtick for a very long time. They've shown things at their compound in the past. There are definitely influences that you know Matt and Jeff and TNA could have picked up on to help influence and inspire their segment. So I don't think it's really a big deal if WWE does something that people were talking about, especially, and this is just my opinion, when they did it so much better. I, I feel that WWE did do it better, which brings me to my second point, execution. Uh, when you look at the two storylines, one is far more relevant than the other. Here's the reality. Matt and Jeff, this storyline feels like it was done out of desperation, and I'll explain why. Matt and Jeff has been done to death. We have seen these two feud in almost every conceivable fashion, even with them shooting fireworks at each other at Final Deletion like they did. I'm not making that up. I swear to God it happened. Um, that's even a little bit of a riff on the WWE storyline 
when Matt blew Jeff up with fireworks, uh, his pyro display. I mean, even so, th there's similarities there. Uh, so it feels like they went to a hyper crazy situation to draw, to breathe new life into a very, very dead situation. And I think the outcome is mixed at best because it doesn't feel correct. The acting is so bad that it's hard to get by. And yes, B movies have bad acting too, but I'm a Bruce Campbell fucking fan because he's the greatest B movie actor in history. Never been bored during one of his movies. I'm just saying. Now, when you look at the Wyatt and New Day situation, this is not a rehash of a feud, a rivalry that we've seen between these two for a very long time. This is a new rivalry, a new feud, and they're going right into a very dark new place for New Day, which is nice. We're seeing an evolution of the New Day uh, team, which is really cool. The Wyatt's bringing them into their level. So I feel that the storylines have differentiating, differentiating uh, aspects right there. I feel that the overall tone is different. While the Hardys are overly hokey and weird and faux dramatic, I feel the Wyatts and New Day is is genuinely dramatic. And I don't think there is there is some hokiness. Don't get me wrong. I mean, whenever people are walking around in sheet masks, there's certainly hokiness. But it feels a little bit more gritty. It feels a little bit more real. And I just like the execution of it done. And part of that is because the production from WWE is, it's the best in business. I mean, plain and simple. TNA doesn't have the money or resources to be able to match the production value of WWE. And I really don't want to hammer them because of it. It's just the reality of the business. One has a lot of money, one has a little money. It's just a reality. So I'm not going to hammer TNA for that aspect of it. What I will hammer them for is the big one for me. This is the biggest aspect for me. They're both built around one thing. Here's the thing that nobody seems to be talking about. Both segments are built around one thing, a fight. They're built around a fight. And in my opinion, this is where the comparisons stop. Because one fight was amazingly brutal and well done, and the other one was an absolute abomination. And it actually happened in a wrestling ring. The Hardy situation which started in a wrestling ring and then quickly devolved into all kinds of madness is simply one of the worst matches in you include backlot brawls, whatever that I've ever seen. It's horrible. It's just, it's, it's cut so weird. There's hardly any damage that's given out. And yet there's pinfall attempts. It just makes no sense from a continuity standpoint in the ring. It makes no sense. The Wyatt family compound uh, situation, on the other hand, that fight was brutal. It was intense. The background music actually made sense in that one because there was some actual physical altercation. They also did something that they haven't been able to do to this point yet and make one of the lost Wyatt mem uh, members, the biggest Wyatt member, was Braun Strowman relevant. Braun Strowman looked like a friggin' Hercules Hulk hybrid in this situation. It was insane. It looks so good. And the fight was just interesting. It was captivating and it looked brutal. I really enjoyed that fight. I didn't enjoy the Matt and Jeff fight. I just didn't. I was distracted by a lot of the other hokey stuff that was going on. Yes. But the fight just didn't do anything for me whatsoever. Um, so, I mean, there's that as well. Uh, I don't, once again, to go back to the ripoff thing of it. And, and that's what this is always going to come down to because TNA guys are always going to accuse the WWE of like, oh, they just ripped off storylines. TNA's been ripping off WWE storylines for a very long time. WWE has gone to the well of the past for WCW storylines, TNA, Ring of Honor. I mean, they just ripped off Ring of Honor not that long ago with the Seth Rollins double title reign. It is what it is. Wrestling does this. You go with what's going to put butts in the seats. NWO, fucking New Japan. I mean, it's... It is what it is. It's not necessarily, to me, a point to go, well, this decides it. No, because this is what wrestling is. You borrow storylines off of each other, and you try to outdo one another. And I feel that when you compare the two segments side by side, regardless of what came first, Deep, deep Impact or Armageddon, one is clearly better than the other, and the same rings true here. And for me, it's the Wyatt Family compound fight. Do I wish that it would have stood on its own a little bit more? Yeah, maybe. Uh, they obviously took some shots and some inspiration from the final deletion match. 
But that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. And here's another aspect of it. Both of these storylines started around the same time. So it's not even like it's a full on riff of it, but even that it's not a good defense. It's just is what it is. The inspiration was there. And I feel that ultimately both companies are winning more than more so for TNA, because let's face it. WWE guys talking about a TNA storyline is a huge win for TNA. It's huge. It's huge. Matt interacting directly with Bray Wyatt and Senor Benjamin interacting with Bray Wyatt is a win for TNA. I'm kind of surprised WWE hasn't put the hammer on it, but it just kind of goes to show where wrestling has changed recently, where there has been more interpromotional stuff. You've seen the New Day talk to Kenny Omega and a whole bunch of guys from New Japan quite frequently. I mean, uh, so it's not as taboo as it once was. The industry has simply changed. What I do like is the fact that you have two people in Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy that live their characters quite regularly 24 uh, seven. And you have to give them respect for that. And whatever happens from this point on, I think everybody wins. So I think it's time to stop arguing and fighting about what's, uh, what came first and if that's the deciding factor here's the reality of it watch both segments determine for yourself what is more appropriate to your taste and simply watch that but as a wrestling fan i think that you should watch both just for that reason alone there is no one proper way to do this plain and simple there's no one all-encompassing way of winning at wrestling there's many different ways there are many ways to be right. There are many ways to be entertaining. Um, for some people, the Hardy situation was very entertaining. I know I laughed my ass off, not in the way that I typically like to laugh, but still, I was entertained. I watched it. I, that was the first time I watched a full episode of TNA Impact from start to finish in years. I did not enjoy it, but that's I, I just don't enjoy the product right now where it is. But that's okay because I don't enjoy many Monday Night Raws that have happened as of late. So it is what it is there too. Uh, I just feel that there are, it's time to stop. It's time to stop bashing these two together and just kind of appreciate for what they're doing. Uh, and that's it. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it somewhat kind of sends a little bit of rationale into the world. And thank you guys for joining me right here on Dead on Dave Productions. If you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and throw a like down. Also support Machinima, which I am a part of now. Yeah, yeah, you turn your ad blockers off, folks. Support Machinima. Support Dead on Dave. Support Too Tall over at XLT Live Podcast. Support my good friend Tommy C over at Shoffin' the Point. Support everybody. Go watch as much things as you can. Input. Be like Johnny Five and Short Circuit. Put as much inside of you as you possibly can. That sounded much more dirty than I intended. But hey, whatever works at the end of the day. Thank you guys for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and share. And as always, if you don't have talent, have talented friends. Keep it copious, folks. Peace.